Chris Carino and Tim Capstraw with you here at Hospital for Special Surgery Training Center in Industry City in Brooklyn. This is the home of the Brooklyn Nets and spring, uh, I should say, I say spring training, like yeah. we're in baseball. Nice. It's kind of, it's the fall and it is <laughs> training camp that gets underway. And a lot of new faces, Tim, around this net team this year. Uh, probably no one is more anticipated to come to Brooklyn and see him in Brooklyn than our guest here today on Training Camp Live on Facebook Live. And that's Jeremy Lin. Great to see you, Jeremy. Great to see you guys as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, give us a little bit of a sense, if you can, of what this first training camp with Kenny Atkinson and the new regime here and all the new faces, what, what's sort of been the focus, what's sort of been the vibe here in the first three days of training camp? Um, energy. I would say energy. Um, we have a lot of uh, energetic staff members who are always motivating the players uh, sometimes. Um, you know, they're definitely encouraging us, clapping and all that, and then sometimes they, you know, try to try to challenge us or, or compete with us or whatever it is. So it's been, a, you know, and this is probably my most manageable training camp in terms of protecting your body and doing things the right way and building up into something. And uh, most times, you know, most teams, you know, right out the gate, it might be, uh, you know, three straight two days or something. But for us, we've been going really, really hard, and then when we're supposed to rest, we really rest. And so... Um, it's been a really good balance. It's been a lot of fun. Well, you talked about energy, and isn't that what really uh, you and uh, Coach Atkinson's relationship began with, right? His positive energy, his energy in working with you. Yeah, I mean, uh, to me, it's, you know, kind of, I guess it can be summed up with the word passion. Um, like, we want to be around people who are passionate about the game, and, and we want to we want to come to work every day surrounded by those type of people because when you do that, I feel like, it's well one you'll get further and two um, it's a lot of fun and you enjoy the process so um, that's what we've that's what we've been really focusing on and just playing you know competing practicing with passion and and your relationship with coach Atkinson's goes back to when he was an assistant with the Knicks when you sort of you know we know what what happened there with the Knicks you, you recently said um, that you you would pray that you'd get back to New York one day uh, to play. Why was that important to you? Just the fans. Um, the fans, you know, the way they had rallied around me and, um, you know, they, they <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I just can't even express just how ri ridiculous or large everything became. Um, and it's, you know, it's because the fans, really, the fans and the media. And so um, I'm, I always, you know, said, you know, if I have a chance, I want to come back. I felt like there was some unfinished business. I you know, left a, a lot earlier than I thought I was going to, and so I wanted to, you know, if the, if, if the re opportunity was right, I was always open to coming back. Well, you didn't directly go to the Knicks, so you, you had to spend some time in the D-League, and now that the Nets have the Long Island Nets, a D-League uh, franchise, what do you think that will bring to this organization? I think it's really important because um, it's, it's like a, you know, a minor league team or whatever for baseball, and it's just... You, you control more of the process. The more of the process that you can control, the, the better it is. So you want you know guys to come back from injury or you want to take a look at some guys or you want to see, right. okay, this guy graduated from college. What would he look like within our system? If you don't have your own D-League team, if you don't have that, you know, that control of a D-League team and you're running a certain system that's the same as your, you know, your, the, you know, us, uh, then it's a lot harder to figure all those things out. When you were coming out of Harvard, did, did you have to make a position adjustments? When you, when you, did the D League help you with that also? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's huge for development. It's huge. Um, so for me, that's what gave me the confidence to believe. You know, I can play in the NBA because when I played in the D League, I was, you know, I, I played well and I was able to stand out a little bit. And that to me was like, all right, well, I think, you know, I'm ready for the next level. Um, and I was a shooting guard at all in college, and I transitioned to a point guard, and so there was a big adjustment there as well. Well, your confidence level uh, from the minute you jumped on the scene with the Knicks when you got that opportunity, um, obviously you had to be a confident person to perform the way you did there in that situation. Uh, and it was a magical run there for a while. Um, but I, want, I was interested in going back to last year when you talk about confidence because we did the games when you guys mm -hmm. went to China in the, uh, the preseason with Charlotte. And we, we did the games for NBA TV from the studio. 
And one of our themes and storylines was what a great fit you were for Charlotte and going down and playing for Steve Clifford and what a great free agent signing that was. And it proved to be a really great fit for you. Coming off those years in Houston and, and then went to L.A., what did going to Charlotte last year and the way you got to, to be a key part of that team and go to the playoffs, what did that do for you and your outlook and your confidence level coming forward now and being a big free agent signee and coming to Brooklyn? Um, everything, you know, I think uh, for a while I was kind of, I lost uh, that joy for the game. Um, for a while it wasn't fun playing. And, um, Prior to going to Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was kind of, you know, I was at my, you know, the low point obviously was my rookie year and going to D-League, getting cut, those things. But, you know, I had gone, you know, experienced New York and everything, and I was getting down to another really low point. Um, and, and that was... You know, tough for me, especially my season in LA. And so, going to Charlotte was a breath of fresh air. Um, it reminded me, you know, I learned so much from Cliff. Uh, just, you know, listening to him talk every day and what he believes in, what he stands for, how much film he watched. And then we played the right way. You know, we played the right way. We moved the ball. We played as a team, and it was just beautiful. And it just, it brought back everything that I remember basketball to be. And uh, I just had so much fun with it. Well, you know, you look at this team now, the Brooklyn Nets, and you've had an eye, you know, only a few days right now, but you've had worked out with guys for a while. What stands out to you with this team right now, personnel wise? Who, who do you like? Who do you, who do you think you're going to be meshing very well with? Um, I mean, it's so early, and, and we haven't done as much of the playing, but just, uh, just from initial impressions, um, well, I think Brooke is very underrated. Somehow he's a 2010 so guy I. every year. He's so underrated. Uh, the guy can score in every which way, um, has soft hands, is the biggest human being ever, <laughs> and um, he he's is. just so talented. Then you get next um, to him, you don't realize just how yeah, big he is. He's, and he's going to make my life really easy because he can pick and pop, pick and roll. Yeah. He can post up back to the basket, face up, floaters, dunks, you know, everything. Um, and so he's going to make my life a lot easier. And then I think we have a. Definitely some young guys who are going to come out and surprise some guys. Um, Sean's going to have a good year, I think. Sean Kilpatrick, uh, he's, he's a hell of a ball player. And um, there's other guys as well that I think are just going to be really good for us. Well, we've, we're, uh, of course, doing this on Facebook Live, social media. So I've got the old uh, tablet out here. Some questions that were sent to us prior from the fans I'd like to get your comments on. Um, being familiar with New York already, what are some of the things or places about Brooklyn and the neighborhood that you've enjoyed so far? Um, well, I guess the one thing that I've really enjoyed about Brooklyn versus, um, well, I lived in Manhattan before, so yeah. Brooklyn, I guess, is a little bit slower. Um, and uh, so actually, I can drive a little bit better. <laughs> Don't go too slow, though. You'll find yeah, out. Yeah, there. Yeah, right. It's not that slow. <laughs> yeah, that horn, that horn is uh, that, that, a lot yeah. of hand signals here, <laughs> yeah, too. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, we, uh, yeah, I, I've, yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but it's been, it's just chill, and I've, I've gotten to explore a little bit, get some really good food, and, uh, man, the food is amazing. Yeah, well, what are, and then we have another question. You mentioned chill. What are some of the things you like to do uh, to relax and chill out? Um, I play a lot of video games. I play Dota 2 a lot um, with my, fan, uh, my brothers and my friends, so... Um, but recently, hey, there hasn't been too much chilling. Um, I've been <laughs> in the gym, and then when I go home, I've just been doing a bunch of um, apartment stuff. So furniture, unboxing stuff, packages, getting everything I need to get moved in. Um, but, you know, I like to cook a lot, too. No kid. So the other day, I cooked for the first time because I got all my pots and pans and everything in, my what's sous the What's your go-to dish? What's the, uh, I put you on the cooking show, they say... Jeremy, cook your, <laughs> cook your signature dish right now. <laughs> Do you have one? Yeah, uh, I would say if I had to choose one, I have this like, um, there's like this jalapeno, green onion, and garlic balsamic glazed chicken. Nice. Wow. So wow. I put all that together. What are we doing? Well, I'll be over at uh, Jeremy's house. <laughs> a little bit later. Roast, yeah, oven roasted chicken, and um, that's, probably, that's probably my favorite thing to make. Um, yeah. You know what that reminds me of? The other day I heard you interviewed, and you were talking about how the Nets um, this Brooklyn Nets organization right now, how, what a great job they do, not just when you're at practice or at the facility, but really 24-7. Give us a feel for uh, the difference, you know, with the Nets in doing those kind of things. Um, you know, I'm not sure how much I'm allowed to reveal about what they do. <laughs> oh, but, oh, um, they keep an eye on you. They, keep, they, 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 they take care of us, and they're, they're I mean, it's, you know, um, everything. I mean, you could just even start with just food, um, like nutrition and, and the quality of food. And I mean, the other day we had lobster. 
Like, <laughs> who eats lobster? <laughs> yeah. facility. I've never seen, smelled, or heard lobster anything in the facility. Um, <laughs> but uh, there was lobster. Um, and that's just, beginning, that's just the beginning of everything. You know, I'm not gonna get into everything that they're doing for us, but um, I can only just say that they really, really care by far, by far, the most uh, for their athletes. You know, we had That's Brooke good. on yesterday, and he was uh, talking about, he, he reminisced about the time he met you for the first time in high school. Do you recall that that meeting? He said it was like in a, in a Denny's or somewhere, hey, 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 or a place of oh, late night, yeah, about 10 o'clock at night. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, I he, do remember. He, we were sitting next to each other, like our booths were next to each other or something. I had like my homies and he had his, and <laughs> and we were all just eating some. Yeah, it was like a Denny's or IHOP or ah, something. That's it. Nice. Typical high school, <laughs> <laughs> high school yeah. food uh, type stuff. So that was a because we asked that there was like a, a sort of a California kinship yeah. between the two of you. Um, there's definitely a California kinship, but more just like an IQ kinship because uh, being from Harvard and Stanford, we tried to. <laughs> impose our in intellectual dominance over everybody else we by said sticking it. together. You're going to have a debate at halftime with yeah. the two of you. Yeah. Um, no, no, we're on the same team. You can't pit us against each other. Right. Right. Yeah, no. <laughs> at first, I used to think, you know, Harvard against Yale, Harvard against Stanford. Now I just realized, you know, all these great institutions, we're going to stick together. We're going to stick together. We're going to fight all these other, these other you guys. You reminded me, though, the other day, there was a great... Conan O'Brien was a Harvard guy, right? His, his graduation speech. His, his, yeah. his address to a commencement address, yeah. where he said, "Don't tell people that you're from Harvard, because every time you do something dumb, they're gonna go, you went to Harvard, <laughs> yeah. and you went to Harvard." <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know exactly. You know, like I'll throw something into the trash can, but I'll miss, and they'll be like, "I thought you went to Harvard." Like, <laughs> <laughs> How does that have to do with anything? Yeah. It doesn't even make sense. Uh, a lot of people uh, checking in with us. There's another, there was another question we had pre-submitted about uh, through your NBA experience through the years. Is there, is there a player or someone that you've played with that's influenced you a great um, deal? Yeah, there's been a lot. Um, I would say, you know, I'll just try to run through this quick, but Landry, when I was in New York. Landry Fields, yeah. yeah. Um, because I think that was the first person where um, I was able to connect with him <clears throat> in terms of, like, being really, really close, and that helped me get through my journey. Um, Jared Jeffries kind of taught me what it means to be a professional because, um, you know, he – he knew how to have fun, and then he knew how to be professional, and, and he, he just had a great balance. And um, and then, you know, even last year, Kemba taught me really what it means to be the leader of a team, but to do it in, like, he was just so humble in his demeanor. And uh, But when the game started, he was an absolute killer. Mm -hmm. and, and Marvin Williams, um, I put him and Jared Jeffries in the same category as the best teammates I've ever had. Oh, that's terrific. Um, a lot of people want us to uh, say hello and that they love the chicken dish as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, they, don't, they don't even know. They don't really know what I'm talking about yet, though, because I yeah. I customize some of this stuff. So. <laughs> don't, uh, give yeah, don't, don't give it away. Don't give it away. Don't give, give away my secret. Uh, <laughs> RJ went to Harvard as well. He wanted a little shout out. I just want to appreciate all the all the, the questions and the comments that are pouring in. Uh, a lot of people from China checking in, even though now it's about to be about. What, one o'clock in the morning there, but people checking yeah. in. Uh, we saw that the, when you went over there for the preseason game, no, I mean, it's unbelievable. People just went crazy, and I'm sure you know there's a there's a, a big population of uh, Chinese Americans and people here in Brooklyn. Um, is that hard? To, is there? Like, I know there's a lot of attention. Is, is that get difficult for you? Have you embraced that? Yeah, I think at this point I've really embraced it. Um, earlier in my career, I didn't really know what to do, and um, I was scared, jaded, or whatever you want to call it, but. Um, I think now I really appreciate it. I love it, and um, I want to be in the community. Not just, you know, obviously I want to be. I want to be a voice for the Asian Americans. I also just want to be in the community, representing or helping a lot of the underprivileged people in Brooklyn as well. So um, that's something that I want to look forward to doing, and and really doing things in the, you know, in philanthropy as well as in the Asian American community yeah. here. When we saw it last year, again, we stood doing those global games. We're able to watch you and the response, even when you're just getting off the bus and yeah. right the crowd. That was really special, right? Yeah, I uh, in China, know, it's it's it, it, there's only X amount of people that really get to experience something like that, and and so I just always try to remind myself how fortunate I am because uh -huh. um, they, I mean, there is ridiculous. They the mm -hmm. gifts I get are. <laughs> like nicer than the gifts that my family gives me sometimes. Just like the, the amount of detail and care and hours that they spent 
into something is just uh, phenomenal. That's beautiful. Well, Jeremy Lin, we really appreciate you taking the time and joining us. It's great getting to know you a little bit, and uh, we'll see you throughout the course of the season. But thank you for joining us here on uh, Training Camp Live. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's Jeremy Lin, Chris Carino, Tim Cabstraw. Great for you to tune in here. Thank you for all the comments and questions. We'll do more tomorrow from Training Camp Live here at Hospital for Special Surgery Training Center in Brooklyn.